My first sailing adventure begins with an epic, life-changing love story. The ones that movies are made of. Sage and I met on the 31st of October, introduced by his mum. Yet the full story includes me meeting him in a dream six months prior. This was truly love at first sight and we knew a big journey awaited us. After only knowing each other for a few weeks, I left everything behind, my home, my family, my friends, my work, and joined him on a huge sailing adventure. I mean, I'm not a ship! God just told us to get off the beach. We've got 10 minutes before the storm. Experience going through a really dangerous bar like this. So. How are you feeling about this storm? Well. It saw me! This is day two on the boat and this is where we currently are which is South Stradbroke. I'm talking quietly because Sage is still asleep in the other hull so we're sleeping in different hulls because well I just sleep better when I've got a bed to myself. <laughs> So Sage put me to work straight away, becoming the first mate on board Pearl. And one of the first mate duties was to help pull up the anchor every day, a job that I surprisingly thoroughly enjoyed. I feel like when we live in a world so based around technology, using our bodies in a purposeful and practical way is so enlivening. Living and sailing on Pearl or any boat is both predictable and unpredictable, as you'll come to see. I really hope you enjoy what I've pieced together. I've tried to encapsulate the behind the scenes and the reality of living on a boat and also the beautiful journey that Sage and I shared. What have you just discovered, Sage? Well, we've just been sitting here. We just arrived at Peel Island. Um, really beautiful here. And then I just heard some thunder rolling around in the distance. So I decided to check the radar. So, and it looks like we've got a bit of a storm approaching. Okay, so we are here. Oh, that looks like a friendly little storm. That's a decent storm. That's Let me pose. How are you feeling about this storm? Well, it's storm. <laughs> There's some serious lightning all around the place. 
Stay tuned, top of the line. Whoa, this is exciting. This is my first stall. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Ready for the thunder? Going? I'm going to let the Zodiac fill up with water, fresh rain water, and then we can put some of our dirty clothes in there and clean our clothes. Holy frickin' moly! Words eat chocolate, right? Eat chocolate! Eat chocolate! Oh my god, eat chocolate! <laughs> Those first six days of sailing were exhilarating beyond belief. My brain was on complete overload. Sage, being the amazing teacher and captain that he is, was teaching me everything about the sails, wind, tide, fetch, rope. My brain was on overload, but I was so filled with life force energy, exhilarated beyond belief. Yet something interesting happened by day seven. I noticed the deep subconscious programs that I hold start to bubble up to the surface. You see, being on a boat in the middle of the ocean where there's no distraction is like being underneath a magnifying glass. And even though I was there with the man that I deeply, deeply love, surrounded with beauty and nature, there were places within my psyche that were coming up to be looked at. And if you don't know, the work that I do in the world is I help people identify their blind spots and subconscious programs that are keeping them limited. So this was a deep initiation. And it takes sovereignty and it takes witnessing and it takes detachment and it takes presence to be able to do that. I guess everything is amplified when you're on a small boat. It's like a magnifying glass. Everything's magnified. <laughs> The wind, um, it's, it's on the verge of what well, it is, it's too strong for the autopilot. It took off this morning, the wind wasn't very strong at all, so we put the full mainsail up and the full jib out. Uh, for quite a while. And we were cruising along at like five knots. And then within half an hour, the wind had picked up quite substantially. That got really quite intense. Didn't it, babe? Yeah. I had to bandage up my ankle. <laughs> it got wild. It's been quite exhilarating, hasn't it? more intense than what I expected. Yeah, this has been your initiation into sailing for sure. The video before this, I was like, woohoo, this is fun. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm gonna die. <laughs> but you did a great job, Captain. Oh, thank you. Navigating that. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, there, were, there was a moment or two there where I was like, Got quite a bit of sail up, yeah. but we handled it, didn't we, first mate? We did. Yeah. We did. You steered really well. Thanks. Autopilot didn't want to work because the wind was too intense. Yeah. The wind was too strong. But autopilot said, no, -uh, I'm tapping out. Yeah. Sage, so take over. You take over. How dare you put me on the helm now? <laughs> wow, that was really wild. So, back down in the hull, I found things have been 
moving around, but the computers have fallen onto the ground and it's going to be interesting when I go over to the kitchen side to find out what's going on on that side after that extreme adventure. So after a week of being at sea, we finally arrived at our first port, Rabi Island. Sage and I decided to jump off Pearl onto his electric skateboard and go to the cinema. What we both weren't expecting was to feel quite strange. Though I never got seasick on board, as soon as my feet touched the solid ground, I became really nauseous and dizzy. And that's it. Oh my God. My sea legs are feeling very, very wobbly. I need a ground. Should we go outside? <laughs> So I'm just in the bathroom at the cinema and I seriously feel really spun out, everything's spinning, everything's moving. By the next day I was so happy to be back on board. Pearl had really become my home, a place where I was most happy. The captain had a love for sleeping in. So most mornings I was up at sunrise enjoying a coffee. Living on board a 31 foot Warham catamaran does mean that there's more space than your usual monohull. So I did my best to incorporate my morning practice of yoga, meditation, movement, gratitude and breath work. Although I did find myself complaining that there wasn't enough room, Sage would be quick to remind me that there was plenty of room. So one of the first made duties was making breakfast, lunch and dinner, which I loved because I'm a big foodie. We are moving. Life is for living. It has been a very intense morning, heading straight into the swell and rocking around in that crazy, literally water has smashed up all of the deck. Today's the first day since my very first day to say that I had to put these guys back on the wristbands to stop the seasick. You know, it's been wild, like so wild I couldn't even feel crazy. This is calm now. Just ask me if I steer. Sage? Yes. Have I been steering? Yeah, whenever I need your assistance with some sort of sailing task, I always get you on the helm, helping me out, steering the boat. I even made you put the mainsail down today as we were arriving. It'll all be coming in a later video on my YouTube channel. <laughs> if you want to check out my channel, it's called The Merit Man. Hello. <laughs> I can't share when I'm steering because You're steering. I'm steering. <laughs> I'm not Instagramming. <laughs> I'm not always on this captain's chair. I do things. We came to the mainland to have a shower, but we forgot a very important thing, and that was swimmers. <sighs> How does it feel, first shower? <laughs> well, I haven't felt like this in a long time. <laughs> There you go, chapter one done. Join us in the next video where Captain Sage has a huge decision to make as a cyclone approaches the east coast of Australia. I give you a tour of Pearl, the ins and outs of living on board a boat. We get escorted into Noosa Heads where we end up getting stuck for a week. I get fully initiated by being on board alone when a cyclone hits the east coast of Australia. A giant cameraman smashes straight into us and I get up at 3 a.m. thinking that the anchor has dragged. Thank you so much for sharing this journey with me and us. I look forward to sharing more with you. Please like and subscribe to my new channel and if you're interested to know more about me and the work that I do, head to my website or my Instagram. And remember, stay peaceful, connected and say yes to the adventure of life.